And the idea is to bring it in front of you as soon as possible. You know, we just take it off the tables, photograph them, put it together, and show you. Because if there's something that's not going to work, we want to hear it about as soon as possible, because we can fix it very quickly. Now, you'll always see that we make very strong proposals, that we're not saying, wait, it's too early to tell. You'll never say it's too early to tell, okay, because that just disempowers you. We're going to show you what we're thinking, okay, and so that you can tell us immediately then if it makes sense or you say that'll never fly, we can actually decide it immediately, not waste any time. So this is the plan right off the, <coughs> right off the, uh, right off the, the tables. Uh, is it upset? No, it's correct. Okay, so this is County Line Road here, and this over here is, uh, is Erie. This is the, the, the facility we're in. By the way, it's very telling that this monster of a building, because this is huge, look at the size of it on the footprint. This gives you a sense of the scale of the amount of land we're working on. It's really quite large. So what we did, there's a mess up here where the, uh, where the, the, the power lines are actually crossing and there's something on that side. But what we're trying to do here is allow this street to keep going north-south and this one east-west, but actually do what's called a peel, okay, which allow you to come here and enter. If you want to do shopping, if you want to meet somebody for a pedestrian thing, you can actually peel off it. And this is the, is the B-grid. This is the one in which the cars can continue going 45 miles an hour. This is where the parking lots are. But then you come in here and you do like this. And you can actually join it over here. You've avoided the intersection. Or you can keep going to the next site, to a green here, connect over, and then actually connect over here. And this is the office park. This is the, the business park that's here already. And then connect up here, and then connect with just a slight change. You can connect up to this street that's almost all built, and then connect over here. So what happens is we've actually abandoned, for pedestrian purposes, your principal grid, and created a secondary one where you can walk to all four quadrants with just a couple of, of, of lights here and there. So it's very precise, and you can really get to places. Anybody who lives here can actually get to the facility and get to everything you need. Now, what we have here is a parking lot, which is, you know, in the existing plan, parking lots in front are bad. But I'm sorry, but across the street is one of the world's largest parking lots. <laughs> okay, so, we, you know, what's up with that? And over here, there may be a tiny parking lot, but that's a parking lot, that's miserable. And then, what this will do is allow a, let's say, a, the kind of supermarket that you want, or medium market, let's call it a medium market, to actually have a perfectly recognizable parking field in front of it. So when you take it to Las Vegas, to the, you know, to where the, these, you recruit the markets, they'll look at it and say, yeah, this works, what's the problem? You're not telling, oh no, this parking's gonna be in the back and it's gonna be this weird thing. It's perfectly recognizable. So this is the market, these are the stores that you will decide what you want, market, hardware store, etc. these things that you want, the big boxes, that will only come here when the parking's in front. But they're also designed in such a way to be approachable from the back. So from the regional point of view, you arrive at this place by car and you park conventionally. But if you live in this area, and by the way, I'm talking about the people who will also live here. These are the existing, the existing subdivisions. They also connect. You will be able to come in here and walk to the shops here. And you'll be able to get around on this A grid that's going around like this. Okay. We've also done a plan that actually takes the current the proposed plan. There's a creek that's here, or a drainage ditch, that is actually coming from some distance, and then it's just cut off. It's buried here. It's buried. Well, it's actually, yes, but, but the current plan buries it. The proposal by the developer buries it. And what we did is we revived it to bring you into the town center. And that's why you get this. It's extremely deep. It's extremely deep, yeah. People right. can fall in it. Yeah, yeah. Well, some people will fall in. Maybe they deserve to be fallen, and they won't fall in twice. Okay, we cannot design. We cannot design this town for the drunken midnight. Okay, that idea that everybody's too dumb that they're going to fall in the ditch. Sorry. Okay, and it, it, it's just not even true. So we're going to make it nice. You're going to make it nice. 
You're going to make it a beautiful place, just like the one here, and bring it to here. You can bury it from here on. Okay? And that's the way it's going to be. You bury it from here on. And back here, with your neighbor, you reciprocate house to house. This is the density that they want. This is your site, which is now for the first time perfectly recognizable to the retailers. The fe poor fellow down here has been trying to get a, a permit for 20 years. Now has a predictable situation. And even the church, actually, if they want to play ball, we can work with them. The peel actually also begins here. See, we actually began it, began it very early. And it goes like that. It's only on this side. The peel is only on this side because this is the commercial side. The other side has no commercial potential. We think, and by the way, over here, we were not given this site up here for development because of the, uh, of the mine shaft here. But that's going to go one day when this is the very... It's a gas well. Oh, sorry. Yes. Gas well. That's going to go. So we went ahead sooner or later to actually create and weave in, you know, an urban fabric that actually makes a lot of sense like that. So this is the long range plan. Okay, this is not about the present. And there you see it. And there's, there's more planning over here, but this is, uh, this is the different part. Yeah. Can I say that I actually dreamed about this a few nights ago? I mean, because this is exactly what I wanted, okay? I mean, I live right west of there. Mm -hmm. And when I was thinking about it, I was saying, hey, everything we've seen to previously has always been putting buildings along County Line yeah. and um, Erie Parkway. And I said, no, we need something like this. You got this whole area, you got a land, you know? Well, one of the things, with, there's a drawing I'm going to show you, which actually shows the plans that the developers have submitted for each of these put together. And it's going to look like the kind of thing you serve your dog for breakfast. <laughs> you know, whatever's left over because the dog doesn't mind. Yep. But it's completely incoherent. This, which by the way is only, is only a day's work, and we still have five to go. This is actually completely coherent and actually symbiotic. You know, this, this, this house here, and this townhouse here, and this apartment building here, and this office building there, and all of this wonderful stuff here is very, very valuable because it's actually all within a five-minute walk of your daily needs. And there's no other place like this one unless you go to Boulder or, or Denver. So it makes it, a, you know, it's just an extraordinarily valuable piece of land. That's the, that's the proposal, yep. And so for directly to the east of the county line from that beautiful area there, would that be just still the open park, that, that area right there? This is the open park. But this is going to be developed. We're going to do something for this parking lot because it is possible someday to actually, you know, do additional pieces. By the way, this building is already uh, overused, and it will have an extent. It needs ext an extension. You know, very, more rooms like this, uh, uh, more, more everything. And our proposal, which is pretty radical, is not to keep scabbing onto this building. You know, the additional whatever it is, those bicycles and those weight rooms and those card rooms, et cetera, but actually to bring some of them over here. You know, begin to decentralize your civic facilities so it's closer, they're closer to get to. So and yes, say, they're administratively more expensive. So would you say that you would be repurposing this building? No, 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 no. The addition of it, the, the envisioned addition would go, would go across the way. So the other side gets a gym as well, and the other side gets a series of meeting rooms like this. You know, you're behaving just like a mega church here. You know, <laughs> let's just put it all in one place. No, why don't we, you know, so you cause traffic congestion. Let's just kind of spread it a little bit, you know, and, and so that each, the people here have this, and then it's got out parcels. It's not that hard to admit. You know, one person may be able to handle the, the adjacent facility. Yep. Why did you make the statement that the southwest corner there is commercially not viable? Uh, south, right there, right there in here. No, no, you're right. Southeast, southeast. 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 Sorry, southeast. Southeast corner. This one. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't mean to say that. That's an office building. Oh, wait That's a minute. That's Walgreens. You said it's not commercial. Or, no, already, I didn't say that. There's already buildings in there. No. I I don't know what I meant to That's say. That's not in the plan. Anything. This is just going to be finished the way it is. That's not in the plan. By the way, this street is in. You understand yeah. that the. This street is in. We're actually picking up. It's quick, quick. There has been planning going on in this town. We're not coming in every year or nothing. All of these things actually are almost perfectly aligned. You know, they kind of have bad aim, you know? But we can actually, we can still, we can still get them together 
to actually weave in a way that is really... I think that the people here who are normally NIMBYs, because they can't stand the stuff that is uh, going to actually cover their long view, now, yes, of course, you're not going to have an open field next to you, but you're going to have you know, quite an extraordinary town center next to you. And by the way, what's going to be behind you, our proposal is a house just like yours. You know, so it's not going to be a, an apartment building or anything. It's, 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 it's symbiotic. But these become much more valuable places to, uh, to live now that they're close to the town center. But why is that southeast corner not being incorporated as part of this overall vision? It's mostly built. It's mostly built. Should, by the way, there's another thing we can do. We can actually think at 2050 when all these crappy old buildings are going to be demolished, including the Walgreens. You know, because they, they're, only, they're only scheduled to last, you know, 12 to, at the most, you know, they depreciate in what, 27 years? And, you know, planning is long term. We can actually overlay a plan on this so that, actually, you know what the minimum we can do is? I'm just thinking out loud. All the parking lots are incoherent, right? Each little thing lands like a spaceship with a separate parking lot. The very least that planning can do is coordinate the parking lots. So you can actually go from one to the other, but also we can design a parking lot system that allows this to be urbanized, to become denser in the future, in the you know the generations from now. We could actually try that. It's never been done, but we can do it. Now, when you look at a plan like this, and we're only showing one at the moment, it's because so far, this, this one is so far superior to any other we have actually considered that we haven't got a second one. But because in some ways we owe you a scenario planning, we can propose <coughs> this as one scenario. The second scenario will be what the developers brought in. And the third scenario might be one that you prefer. And then there can actually be a choice. Because, you know, this, this, as I said, we stumbled across a plan that actually designed itself very easily because of the, the implied connectivity. Actually works beautifully. So we don't have a, we don't have a second plan the way we normally do. But uh, we might come up with a second plan. It's just that this is what we have next door. Yes? Do all those four intersections that are very close to the main Here. intersection, yeah. I would bet that today's code, that violates everything in the code today. Say they're at 700 feet. They're correct. They are? Yep. Okay. Yep. They're absolutely correct. In fact, they're far enough to get a light if you want it. Roundabout. Roundabout. Uh, the other thing is, here's a roundabout. Somebody wished for that. This, by the way, is extraordinary because it solves so many problems. Uh, by the way, what you get, there's just one unfortunate thing that we have to talk about, which is because of the priority of the, of the right turn, you basically get the morning traffic. You know, the traffic to work. So you're going to sell a lot of coffee and donuts if, you want, if you're thinking of opening a shop. <laughs> the, evening, the evening traffic, which is coming, has to actually wait and make a left turn. So it's less automatic, but that's a very small, a very small detail. And by the way, the people coming from here, from the south, this is uh, this. There's going to be there's going to be another one of these, one of these peels. So it actually will come in, and you'll be able to shop on the way home. So is that circle up there? Is that a form of a traffic circle? Yeah, that that is a particular form, because it it's so complex up here because of the you know, of the, uh, of, of the power line. We couldn't do a simple circle. And then in the, the green area, is that just like landscaping in there? Yes, that's actually a setback that the city... Is that a gas line? It's a gas line easement, but it's also, it's the look. The look mm -hmm. is to have that, that, uh, that have the, the parkway Center. look. Yeah. And that's fine, that's what you have elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And this doesn't have to be pedestrian any longer, right, because we're, we're, we're bringing it in. And we have some green spaces where they naturally occur. I understand that there's a, there's a percentage of green space that's required. So we're actually providing it. Like this is the green space that is to be, to be required by the code. This is the green space, and that's the green space. So we're, we're, we're actually making green space. Not the quantity the code requires, but the quantity the plan requires.
You know, like this, this seems right. Uh, the people down here actually need a couple of soccer fields. That, that's the way we're thinking. Instead of this, the pure numeric of percentages, like we need this many acres for that. You know, the plan tells you really what it wants to be. Andres, how big is that green in the southwest corner? Do we know? How many acres? Do you know? Uh, this is uh, this 800 is by 260, 280. Corker, is that big enough? Is, is the intention for that playing fields? Or is oh, no. No, no, it's just, is no but it can be. Space? It can be. As long as the kids are cute and they dress in little white uniforms. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm trying to understand if that's the scale of, um, of a community space that you're programming for events, or if that's the scale of playing fields. Oh, go back a bit. I'm sorry. Uh, if you look, uh, if you look at this one, this is a comparison. This seems to be right. used for soccer now, right? Yeah, yes. both of those. So we can one actually there, right? compare a little bit. By the way, you can't ask a developer to, to do, there's only so much you can ask in terms of open space donation before it's, it's actually uh, essentially unfair. The city might buy more land from the developer, but, but that's the idea. Oh, and here's, for example, right now, so we didn't really discuss the use that much, but it's a neighborhood part for and yeah. can't it. And by the way, there's another one here. There's another one here as well, then, for, for these people to play. Can we zoom in on some of those areas? Like uh, we don't have very much. Um, we, well, we have the next one. I will zoom in. OK, yes, these are the zoom ins. Go ahead. OK, that's the zoom in. This is gone. This, this, this green will be buried. The, the green, the green walkway takes you just to here. By the way, I don't expect this to remain a, an industrial ditch. You know, it, should, it's, it would be landscaped into a very pleasant. Mm -hmm. And actually to become an asset to the buildings that face it. Okay, but this will be gone. And, and there'll be, these people need a playground as well, so that's here. And there's a walkway that takes you from here as well. You realize the ditch is 25 feet deep. Is it? Yeah, so it becomes very wide if you don't bury it. The other thing is... is well, we can put a pipe in it and just put a greenway, no? Well, yes, that's how we that's decided. How it's it. but, okay, I get it. But just yeah, by got it. reference, uh, if I may, yeah. uh, while it's very imaginative, it disrespects the uh, individual property lines. So I don't know how you do Does it? it? Does no, it? Yes. They're there. Yeah, but you've got that diagonal, so between Regency and Ranch. So here, this is the... This is no, the diagonal. Uh, no, no, I understand. Down where the where the ditch is, yeah, and but, the diagonal line. No, no, look, you have to look closely. It's really clever. Look. Yeah. It's actually on an alley or on a, or on a, It's usually on alleys. And the park is shared between two properties. You don't have to do a trade. You mean the greenway across the diagonal? Well, when we're done, maybe we can look at the boundaries. I'm looking at this in the boundaries. You're kind of you're going to end up with a bunch of horse trading. But I can tell you it's probably never going to happen. No, no. Excuse me. No, before you say that, no. I wasn't born yesterday. There's no horse trading. Zero. Okay? There's not. In fact, what you had before is horse trading because you were sharing a street. We're not even sharing a street well, it's a anymore. Actually, it's a flattened street, though. Yeah. Well, we're not, you're not sharing that. You're actually sharing, you're sharing an alley and a greenway and an alley. So I know, I know about horse trading. You don't have to do it. But do bring up these things so that I can lay them to rest. <laughs> okay, what else? Uh, this is a this is a green that the designer uh, Corkut designed, and I think it should be a parking lot because there's a green over here. It's already a parking lot. Oh, you've redone it. <laughs> We've redone it as a parking lot. Yeah, we are just okay. And here, the, we, we, there's an interesting idea here. When you see this fully developed. This could be a very, very advanced incubator space there. We have, we have a vision for that that is truly one of the, you know, one of the more creative ideas we've had. And you, you'll see that highly developed when it happens. Um, when it happens, but this will be a parking lot, okay, in the future. The green is internal. Because it's too loud out here. You know, that's not where you, that's not where the, uh, that's not the pleasant place. The pleasant place is inside. So is blue, blue commercial or what is, what's, there, what's commercial, what's residential? 
Um, the way, uh, this is so new, I don't know. It could be that the pencil ran out. <laughs> and there's all sorts of stuff well, going on like that. We read this commercial, but again, we didn't discuss in depth the yeah. usage. Uh, the blue is incubator place that we're imagining, which would have industry, small industry, and offices, where <coughs> kind of like a warehouse space. We're going to draw space. for you the un we have a very good renderer just arrived today, and he's going to draw very accurate images of the unusual stuff. There's stuff that's just townhouses and houses. We don't need to draw that. You know what they look like. But every once in a while, there's something like this or something else, and that's the renderings will be to show that kind of Im Im imaginative stuff. The way I see it is that this is very, very inexpensive space very inexpensive, uh, the kind of uh, structure that's used to build CVS drugstores that costs $35 a foot, you know, tall ceilings, uh, and you can actually start a business there. You basically furnish it inside, you start your business, and it's, it's, a, it's, it's not like anything else. It doesn't necessarily have a storefront. It's just a place where you start work. Sometimes they're called maker spaces now. It's, a, it's, it's what the young people are looking for when they're tired of doing electronic stuff. Some people want to do things, actually, with their hands. They're beginning to fabricate again, particularly with CNC cutters and so forth. The kids are now making things again, and that's what would go there. It would be zoned specifically to be able to make some noise. What about a little noise, a little vibration, you know, you know a little bit of industrial work? Nothing toxic, but it doesn't have to be so perfumed as, for example, a Class A office building has to be. You know, you can actually run a more messy operation. And by the way, there could also be a nightclub. You know, all these things that are, would be considered noxious to residential. If they were anywhere near residential, they would be there. Maybe your teenagers won't go to Boulder every night. Hey, Corkut, what are the things that look like yellow caterpillars sitting on top of what looks like single wish, family lots yeah, what the and hell? town lots? What's that? Apartments. Okay. They're what? Apartments. Okay, I think we need all another the, school. All the fuzzy caterpillars are apartments? You know, they're townhomes. If, I mean, if you see lot lines, those are fee simple lots. No, but you've got a good point. These are. Those so look like apartments. apartments. Those are apartments. Yeah. The, the ones that are sitting on one top looks like single family lots and yeah. townhome lots. Right. What are those? These are townhouses. Townhouse. Townhouses alley loaded. These are regular houses without alleys, and apparently these are apartments. But I actually think we might need a school. You know, just, just alerting you that, that, you know, at this point, there's enough going on here that actually a, a, a particular elementary school would make some sense. Because kids really should, one of the offerings here should be that kids should walk to school. There's a school just to the north. There is? Mm. Elementary? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of middle. How old? Brand new. Seven years old. Okay. So you're mixing townhomes with single family lots on the same block front? Maybe. <laughs> Not in the same block front. Yeah, townhouses face townhouses. Townhouses face townhouses. Houses face houses. Right? It, you, shouldn't, you really shouldn't mix them, ideally. Not on the same block face. A little bit here. Yeah. Right. She caught you being a slob. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to the other blow up one for the. Um, no, that's that's the upper part. Yeah. The whole thing or, or the. Yeah, uh, the, the next one. Yeah, that one. By the way, a lot of these things are coming in are coming in from arbitrarily <coughs> from, from the east and the north. And we're trying to actually make sense of them. We're trying to actually deal with them gracefully, as if, you know, and I think we've been lucky that they do seem to make sense most of the time. And it's going to seem like very well woven to the existing housing, as opposed to the most subdivisions now have this very hard edge and nothing connects and so forth. This is going to, this is going to work better. The other thing is uh, these sites here are actually best because of their visibility on the highway and because they don't have parking in front, these are actually best as small office buildings, that line. 
which we learned today that actually there's a great market for that. But we're just beginning to think about where those might go. So this is clearly retail. The, this is smaller retail, possibly mixed use in the sense that you can live above. Some people will enjoy it. I would love to preserve a site for a hotel so I don't have to commute 30 minutes to every night. It, you know, I think this might be a hotel. Now, not of the kind that you can get Marriott to come in, but you can get, you know, the Patel family, the Indian family. They're actually made building hotels like mad where the big players won't recognize it. They would recognize this in a minute, you know, and say, this is fantastic. And, uh, and then you'd have a hotel in town. What size? Uh, well, I think people say that only 200 rooms work. I don't think that's true. Because I've, I've been to very nice ones that are 80, for example. Most hiring of people tell me about 100 rooms. About what? 100 rooms. 100, yeah. Okay, so no problem. By the way, so you see the old, the old ironclad rule that I learned of 200 just two years ago is now 100. <laughs> That's what I think of ironclad rules. But everything's getting smaller and bigger, both. You know, the center's falling out. And so I would also say that, that uh, a market, look at this. So this, this great walkway that goes in actually terminates in a tower. The tower belongs to the market. It's actually seen from here. It's seen from here, from both sides. And actually, people enter. The pedestrians enter from this side. The car people enter from that side. I can't imagine that there isn't some market company somewhere that isn't going to just say, this is the coolest site I've ever seen. If the old offerings were, this is a corner, well, they're going to find a better corner. There are better corners than this one, but there isn't a better, a better design corner than this one. And I think they would recognize that. Same from the north also. Oh yes, and it actually terminates this vista, the tower. By the way, we need to rescind your 35, 35 uh, uh, foot building height for that tower, <laughs> just for the tower. Let me ask about the circle up there, because that's the well, and it looks like you're designing things right around on top of the well. Which, this? Yep. Yeah, that's when the well goes. Right, but... You're showing all kinds of things in there. I mean, oh yeah, no, we're we're going to think we're we're actually designing for when it goes away. So you think it is going away? Yeah. We were also told we could put a road within the buffer zone. This, right. but we right. can't put buildings on top yeah. of that bit. Right. So that's why we. So so until just a couple of hours ago, we just had this road and this road, and we stopped. We didn't do this. It, that just happened in the last couple of hours because we said someday this well is going to close. You know, and then we'll be ready with a plan. It, it's really about seeing past the present. You know, you can't do plans like this if all, you, if all you look at is this is the way it is now. Sometimes you have to imagine people dead. Oh, the traffic engineer doesn't like it? How old is he? Let's see. Okay. <laughs> Public works guy? Gone. Let's go ahead and design. <laughs> It just, you know, and this is, this is the actual sequence. I started doing this very early when people started telling me no. And then I'd look at them and said, we're not even talking in your lifetime. So I went ahead and drew it. And then when you actually, you're permitted to draw it, the traffic engineer comes back and says, that's a cool idea. He actually recognizes that it's a cool idea once you permit yourself to draw it. The problem is we never actually even get to draw things because we're told no too early. And that's the most common experience. Now, don't even try it. The guys turned that down before. And that's, that's a killer. OK, so what are the problems? Does the town of Erie own any of that on the north end? Question? What's the question? That the town of Erie? Well is, does the town own any of that? Any of this up here? None. Mm -hmm. well, oh, on the east side. The ditch itself, the, the, doesn't that any of the town have rights over that? The town, town owns the ditch company. Okay. <laughs> they own the ditch yeah, company, right. not the land. No land is owned by the town. They control the ditch company. I was not sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, do you happen to know what the life of a well like that is? How long they last? 
It's probably got another 10 or 15 years based on what they told us. Who's, who's is it? I think it's Creston. I don't know, they keep changing all the oil companies right? trying to keep. Yeah, and actually they're actually finding that this stuff isn't profitable. That might actually close it's, it down earlier. It's probably an old vertical and those are those are quickly going yeah. away. If it's Crestone, they are probably drilling in that area from someplace else and so it will be a, a very short term. Right. Well, we just did um, testing, seismic testing on that property over the summer. I don't know what happened with it, but um, it's still an active well site. So. Yeah. From a design perspective and energy wise, can we design it with renewable in mind for rooftops? I was speaking yesterday, because we've only been here two days, with uh, developers who've tried this, local people. And uh, all the, the best they can do is get the houses ready for to be green houses. They're not, people will not actually pay what it takes to. To actually, uh, to actually install the full, the full kit at this moment. I think it's going to be uh, installed not because it's the right thing to do, but because you can bridge the brownouts. It's going to be a, a different regime that says, well, we're, you know, we better grow our own food, not because it's the right thing to do, but because you know, those, those planes from Chile aren't coming anymore with the strawberries. So we need, you know, that, that's, the thinking's going to change for doing the right thing. And it's coming, I think that's coming very fast. Yeah, I think it's going to change more than that. I mean, I have solar panels in my house, and yes, you have a lot. But the more and more you produce, the more and more, like, any, the cost is going to come down. Yeah. And, it's going to, and, you're, and you're going to realize that it's, it just makes sense. Well, the, uh, what, I know the politics of climate change and so forth, but I'll tell you, uh, Miami is impossible to live in. It's so hot right now, it's like midsummer. It's really freaky. And this is the second year it's like that. It's getting to the point, it's not, you know, we live in Miami for the winter, which is cool and perfect. It didn't happen last year. This year, it's, it's, it's again too hot, really unpleasant. And so things are really off fast. And what happens is, it may, it may or may not be scientific, but that affects real estate sales. And when that kind of thing happens, you can actually, you can actually, start marketing doing environmental responsive there things. There is an article I just came out today that I read that was talking about the influx of people leaving Colorado, the people coming to. And Florida is one, of the, is one of the higher states for people coming to Colorado. Yeah. Because of exactly that reason. Despite you know, your incredibly horrible the, tax structure and everything. Yeah. Whether climate change does, does yeah. take on and, and you have those issues of flooding that's going to occur more and more and more, yeah. those folks don't want yeah. to be here. So uh, if you keep your ear to the couple of things, a couple of things, I, I, I mentioned this, but I think it's important for the developers to know this. Uh, I've mentioned it, I'm going to repeat it. In uh, 2022, actually my friend here, Paul, is actually tracking the metrics of carbon, of atmospheric carbon. He's looking at it all. The news is horrible. It's all going absolutely the wrong way, and that report is already being compiled for 2022 which is the IPCC report. It will also coincide, what's the name of the American report? The National. Yeah, National. Yeah. Okay, there are two big reports. One is the American one that comes out every six years. Right. Every six years, and the, the international one that comes out every four years. They happen to coincide in 2022. They're coming out that year. That year, the metrics are going like that. Yeah. Okay, they're just shooting like a rocket, the carbon. Nothing's reducing. At that point, I think it's what I call the Pearl Harbor moment. Like, whoa, this is really bad news. And this project is going to be absolutely in the midpoint of its marketing in 2022. You know, the streets will be in, you know, buildings will start going, and suddenly this news comes in that we're not going to make it. Okay, for me, that's an opportunity, actually, to sell real estate. For you, it might be the opportunity to do the right thing. But I think it's a great opportunity to say, if you live here, you're going to be okay. So here's the good news. Our home builders in this market, they're all hitting her scores of like 45 to 65, which your average like 1920 uh, students in Roebuck Kit in Park Hill is like two or 300. Okay, so yeah. the, the builders are, you get Lennar and KB who have, have made massive 
national efforts to bring the HERS scores down on their houses. Um, and so our, our new homes are getting more and more energy efficient without having to do anything. Um, because our building codes in our cities are, are, are trending them that direction. And then you've got builders in this market like Thrive, who's building all of their homes zero energy, right? So even if the market's not choosing a solar panel now, they can choose it in the future. And, and most of the homes that our builders are building these days do have that ability for them to choose those solar panels. Yeah. So we're so as an industry, our home building industry yeah. is moving in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I mean, I, I mean, four or five years ago, I'm on the planning commission. So. I know you are. It's a thing. <laughs> <I'm in front laughs> right. So I think the thing is, is that we, we built, we wanted to have the ability to have solar <coughs> ready homes. That you can require them, but you can do it because we're thinking about uh, 10 to 15 years down the road. If people want to have the option to do it, they can do it. Don't but you have brownouts are. already? Brownouts? No. I mean, look at California. Yeah. Yeah. We have brownouts in Florida. Unexplainable. We just switch on the. That's not new in Florida. It goes back years. Yeah. Well, they're extremely inconvenient. I mean, just when the electricity goes out, your food, your sleep, everything, your job, you can't, your office can't work. So we're now installing. People who are completely, don't even believe in climate change, you know, are still installing um, enough, enough of these facilities to bridge, to bridge the brownouts. There's a town that I live in, uh, actually in France, over the three months of the year, and they just unhooked from the water system from the regional water system dug its own well so that, that you know you they couldn't screw with them you know so they've guaranteed and you know what it did it's the first thing the developers say oh by the way here's your house but it's also on its independent you know water system so it's really marketable what's happening is all this stuff is now becoming marketable i would like to see actually uh in some of the open land some uh some of these very sociable uh, allotment gardens. You know, where older folk can actually socialize and socialize with younger people. And something we should be talking more about is, is social isolation and how do we bring people together so that they don't feel so alone, particularly the older folk. Yes? Sir. I'd like to ask about the parking lot down in the northeast corner. You, you said that thing's going to go away. That's the one right to the west of here. But the problem is, I mean, with that sports complex, and when we have soccer games going, I mean, that fills up. Yeah. They had to build a parking lot on the north side yeah. of there just to handle yeah. some of the older folk. Yeah. Well, uh, we have to think about that because it might be worth at some point building a parking garage that then becomes useful for another thing. You know, there, there are, here's what we found, is when we build these communities, the whole thing becomes so valuable that people, people can begin affording parking garages that were unthinkable, like a parking garage. No one can afford that. That only happens downtown. And then suddenly it happens because the land is more valuable. So we just want to think a little bit ahead for that. Okay. Or maybe the point where, you know, maybe 30 years from now, people aren't driving there at all. They're just, the buses are picking them up. So that, with that sports complex, there is an awful big inflow of people yeah. that come yeah. through. Yeah. Do you envision community gardens anywhere in here? I would, um, uh, almost all the projects we're doing now have community gardens. It's become a very, very high, a very desirable amenity. Uh, what yes. about on top of these uh, gas easements? Yeah. Uh, you know where they're mostly in Europe? On the railway right-of-ways. You know where where it's where it's too loud to live. So maybe yeah, it's possible. I'm not romanticizing growing food because it's tough work. I know people do it for social reasons. You know they go mm -hmm. out there, they sit. You know Americans don't like to be seen sitting anywhere. They have they'd rather be seen standing holding a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually doing something here, and so they're they're available for conversation. Uh, eventually, the town of Erie will become the city of Erie, mm. home rule. And inevitably, the town offices will outgrow the current city hall building. Is it worthwhile to incorporate a uh, plan for accommodating that move, which will 
in all likelihood probably happen. Yeah, let me, let me think out loud. Almost every, there's a theory of government that's called subsidiarity. And subsidiarity says that decisions should be made at the most local level that can competently make it. Okay, you don't want people over in Boulder deciding anything or over in Washington deciding. They need to decide some things, but not many things. Um, most developers who do our communities actually uh, institute a private government, a homeowners association, that actually takes care of local things. Like for example, a local community may want to actually tax itself to have an arts facility of its own, that kind of thing. And so for many years now, we've set up these private governments, not to interfere with the upper government, you know, with the municipal government, but to allow additional things. I think at some level, at some level, this crowd here, because, particularly because of the difficulties of mixed use, people, there's a more reason to fight with mixed use than not, okay? If you kind of dislike your neighbor here for six reasons, you can dislike your neighbor here for 10 reasons or 12 reasons. There's, there's more stuff going on you know, in these. And I think the main city hall doesn't want to administer this. It has to be administered locally with local laws. So I think there will be a level of that. I would prefer if the city hall stay where it is, because it's a very handsome building, and I think that the existing traditional town really deserves to keep it. You know, that seems right. And actually to have a subsidiary administrative building here for local issues but not to take it away from the main, from the traditional town. Besides, they'll fight you on that. <laughs> it's also very nice, isn't it? I mean, it's a beautiful building. That's gorgeous. Yeah. Last night when you were talking, you were talking about, you know, having um, common shared courtyards and so forth. I see none of that in this. No. I mean, it's the same old standard apartments, mm -hmm. single family homes. You haven't done any of that. I mean, well, we've only been here. A little while. Okay, well, are you going to revise? <laughs> are you going to revise some of that? No, uh, that yeah. in, at this level, it will not look particularly different because let's say that's a lot of yay size, whatever that is. What we will illustrate for you is that actually, instead of just putting one big blocky McMansion in the middle, it would we'd show you how actually several uh, smaller structures would, could actually fit uh, forming a compound. But shouldn't that be drawn in on here, some places where you yeah, allocate space for that? But we just haven't had time. But we yes. need to be reminded sometimes to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm here. <laughs> no, but honestly, this is a lot of work for, for uh, particularly with these oh, yeah. enormous I'm, interruptions, I'm happy with having that. to talk to you for hours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but the, I, I would like to propose that now. The other thing is, for example, so what developer is going to build a compound? They're not going to do it because it's risky. And so one of the things, for example, that we can do is say, okay, you guys, you as a developer, you as a developer, if you try this type, just experiment with this, we'll give you all sorts of breaks. You know, we'll actually, uh, uh, your, uh, all the fees you have to pay, all this stuff, we'll give you a break on that if you actually experiment with this. What we found is that nobody will actually buy it until they've seen it. You can talk about it all day. Compounds are so great. Um, uh, ADUs are so great, towers are so great, no one will do it. Then somebody builds it and everybody does it. So we need to, to speak to, to the developers about doing certain experimental things. You should know that the Dutch, every time a permit is actually given in Holland, there's a percentage of buildings that have to be not only affordable and all that stuff, but actually experimental. Okay, we, we gave you this permit, you're making this much profit, 5% of your buildings have to experiment with new living arrangements, and the developers have to provide them. And that's how things move forward in Holland. Have you considered designing some neighborhood pubs like over in England so everybody has a pub to walk to? Okay. Uh, I think there needs to be several. Uh, just to start off, beer people don't like coffee people. They don't, you can't serve both uh, in one place. And as you know, coffee is really bad in a beer place. They're telling you, don't try it again. So I think there needs to be a whole declension of these places, and particularly with different price points. You know, uh, for example, I'll never go into a place that sells a bar that has six TV screens. You know, I just can't stand it because all I do is look at them. And so I, there needs to be one that's the old style in which you actually interact. 
but I think that there's enough enough space here, enough place that uh, it, that 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 kind of place would work. That's a different agenda, but it actually requires a developer who actually goes out and recruits, who actually figures out, I really want that kind of place here. I saw it, and they actually make the deal and bring the person. Because it doesn't happen naturally. This is not organic. You know, the merchant you want, the, what you're imagining, it has to be, he has, that person has to be found and brought and probably subsidized for a while. You can't just open up and say, hey, I've got 10,000 square feet for lease. Let's get the right people to come in. It doesn't happen. Normally, we ask, we make a list. Um, send in what? This morning, this morning, we're, we went to the shopping center for breakfast. Where was the intersection again? Do you remember? Arapahoe and Folsom. Arapahoe and? And Folsom. OK. The corner of Rappahoe and Folsom, where we were sent for breakfast, has a shopping has a strip shopping center that has that and across the way. Do you have it? Okay, let me show you this. This is really interesting. Okay, right here. This is our analysis since breakfast. So this is what we did at breakfast. We were sent here to get a decent breakfast, like a diner. By the way, absolutely full. I mean, absolutely every seat taken. And then you go down here, and there's a great barber sto store for men, and a great hair salon for women, and a great watch store. Just try to find a watch store today. And then somebody that repairs your computers. It's like a dream. I said, oh my god, I want to live near her. Okay. And then you go across the way, and there's a hardware store, and there's a small market. And I went around, and I said, here, organically, in, randomly, in a place in, um, in downtown Boulder, is the full array of stores you need. There was even an a dentist, et cetera, et cetera. Right here. Now, developers tell you, oh, this can't happen. Guess what? I'm not speaking theory. This is actually happening and seems to be doing very well. Okay, so this is the kind of place that when you leave things alone, actually organically happen. And then some of these have to be induced. But I thought this was actually lovely. Like, if we can get that program, here it is. We, here's the program. Mountain gear, everything you need in Colorado. You know, the, the various restaurants, everything, strip joint, you know, whatever. I don't know what this stuff is. Hotel. <laughs> okay, hotel. But whatever it is in Colorado, these people seem to think, I think this is an enormous kindness to the people living here to have those stores there. And by the way, this is how... Okay, can you put it directly on our site? I can't move it down. Okay, we actually took it. That actually fits on, on the corner site, the north uh, the northwestern corner site. Yeah, we, like if you imagine it being shifted a little bit to the left, it would fit on that. Yeah. This is what you're seeing here, is this entire area inside the, the yeah. site that we were given. But we also did it exactly on the corner to show this is perfectly doable. And you can't say it's impossible, because it's actually happening now. Now, it does require cheap space, like, you know, those, uh, that box where the diner was and the barber shop, that was paid off a long time ago. You know, you can't just build it new and have it work, but, but, it, but in theory, it works, not in theory, in practice, it works really well. It's only in theory that it doesn't work. And, and just to, I mean, I work there, so I, I work at C. Boulder, so my office used to be at the stadium, so I would walk down the street on Folsom go and have lunch, five, ten minutes walk, come back, never get in my car. Oh, I don't need to go and get some skis or something like that. I would go to Epic. Or if I want to go and decide, hey, I need to mail something, I go to Pack Mail. Or if I want a hamburger, I go, you know, to Larkburger. And there's a number of different places in there. Now, granted, the, the challenge of Boulder is that a lot of stores have changed hands because the rents have gone yeah. steadily higher. But they have done a really great job there. And everything Where do you get your tattoos? I actually didn't see that. <laughs> right. right. True. But, but that specific area. A few blocks. A few blocks. I think I'm going to go back in five Four or five more. I tried there the shop. Okay, so I thought this was low. This was low on beer joints and tattoo parlors. Over on the hill. Well, yeah. 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 Yeah.
other interesting part about that is McGuckins had a basically a lock on hardware in Boulder until what, seven, ten years ago when they let a Home Depot in. Otherwise, they were the only hardware. Uh, this the one here, that's yeah. the one. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they had protection. That's what kept them in business uh -huh. for years. Yeah. So now you have to compete. Yeah. Now you got to compete in their trouble. And they're, are, they having, are they in trouble? There's a Home Depot just, not, just about where you, you're standing. There's a Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> but they have unusual stuff. So they still have to go there. Well, also, it doesn't take very much to have a more pleasant experience in Home Depot. Yeah. It's one of the few American stores where they really hate you and want to humiliate you. Uh, <laughs> I, would rather go, I would go there. <laughs> okay, so anyway, we're finding, we're gradually finding these things. Uh, these things, you know, you know these, these places better than we do. Once you get a feeling for what we're looking for, you know, like, oh, this is a place that we'd love to have this, uh, this set of stores, you know, bring them along and we'll study them. As I said, this was just the result of breakfast. Uh, by the way, these are the, uh, this is our site here. And you can see where actually the bigger retail places are. And they're all better. Everybody has gone to the... Do you see this super grid here? You understand that there's a grid, there's a one mile grid that used to be good enough for, for the big box retailers. They were happy to be on the one mile grid. The old Jeffersonian grid, it's not good enough now. You know, they need to have this much traffic. You know, once, these, once the big turnpikes and highways came in, they all gravitate here. So they're very far. They're very far. And they have, and you're, you're underserved, you're, you're drastically underserved. And as somebody says, yes, we do have supermarkets, but you're driving 15 minutes to them. Don't repair, don't, don't ever widen the road. It just induces more traffic. More people deciding to shop there instead of nearby. What else? By the way, you'll get to see this again because we keep developing and it's repetitive. But if you have any 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 ideas or problems with it, you gotta let us know. What? No, is it an option for underground parking? That? Does anybody know? Is there what? Un uh, underground parking, is there an option? <laughs> the problem is the cost. It is just even higher than the parking structure. So if you're gonna think about it's a higher cost. Parking, yeah. You better the economics of the area better support it. Yeah. And people don't like to park underground. They, they avoid it as much as possible. So your comment about no bigger roads, are you looking at the wider community? Because so far, four-lane roads are a standard that somehow we need to do. Look, we, it's so obvious that you shouldn't widen roads that I actually forget to say it. It used to be the important thing to remind people that the minute you widen the road, you just induce the traffic that'll fill it. And you'll distort the retail and you wasted a lot of money that you have to maintain. We used to say that, but now everybody knows that. Even the new, the new traffic, even the new green book says that. Even the traffic engineers know that. And it, it, it talks about it. It's called induced traffic. Traffic will expand to the capacity of the roads. One of the things, the best things that could happen is actually to really get people to stay here at, in the evening and to, uh, and to not commute to Boulder is to have continual construction, mindless, <laughs> purposeless construction on that road. And then they'll say, you know, screw this, I'll stay. And that's what they, I thought that was they've been doing for like the last eight years. <laughs> but that's the only real real uh, uh, suggestion that a traffic engineer can give you in order to reduce traffic is make it very unpleasant to... Uh... Look, here's something that happened in Florida. There's a famous bridge that opened in, uh, that got stuck open in Stewart, Florida. It just rusted and it came up, and it was very well used. When they fixed it, there was no traffic. <laughs> there was no one who wanted to use it. You know, people just arrange their life not not going such long distances. <laughs> One theoretical thing, and this last thing I want to say, is you're suffering from proximity to two very good cities. You know, if you were actually further from Denver and Boulder, 
this would be much more a much more uh, a much more complete community. It's just it sucks the life away. The fact that both are such good places. If it were the standard, basically mediocre American city, you wouldn't have this problem. But they're two of the coolest cities in America, so you're you're being drained by them. It's a tough it's a tough situation. I ever want to play life labor because I can't live in those though. So. Well, that's true. Yeah. Okay, so we'll see you next time, whenever that is. Twelve.